Model-based reinforcement learning is the simplest form of reinforcement learning. In this version, we actually know everything there is to know about the environment and there is no need for exploration. And in particular, what we know is the complete probability distribution of the next state. So given ST and AT, we know exactly what's the likelihood of reaching um, uh, any possible state. And we also know the reward. And in fact, I'm going to explain this in a slightly more general way than we had in the previous lecture. Uh, previously, we said that there is a fixed reward uh, if you are in state ST and you take action AT. But here I'm even saying that, you know, there is a, um, a set of different uh, rewards that you can get uh, in this state with that action. And we know the probability distribution over all these reward values. So there is uh, the environment is completely known via these uh, probability distributions. And there is no need for exploration to learn something about these values. We already have them. And um, in this case, the value function uh, is, is written just uh, with a small modification reflecting the fact that the rewards are now um, uh, given via probability distributions. And so uh, instead of having the exact uh, reward here in the current state and with the current action, we will have the expected value of uh, this uh, uh, probabilistic variable. And so the value functions are very similarly as before. The maximum over all possible actions we can take uh, in state ST. And as a result of this uh, function, we have uh, right away some reward and we have the expected value of that reward. Plus, uh, then we have the later rewards we have we, we can get. And um, that's going to be with this um, uh, factor gamma and then a sum over all possible states we can be in, we have the probability of reaching that state times the value function in this state. So exactly the same what we had in the previous video, just with this small um, uh, update to reflect the fact that the reward is now a um, uh, stochastic variable. And the whole point is um, that we can, in fact, solve, uh, in this case, uh, we, we can solve this equation and calculate, in fact, uh, the values of this, um, of this value function. And once we have the value function, the optimal policy uh, is really easy to explore and it's going to be uh, just like we discussed before, the optimal policy starting from state uh, ST is going to be, um, you know, take this action which minimizes the reward you are expected to get. And, and this reward or cumulative reward uh, is, is expressed in this way. And everything here is known once we know these value functions. So the, the whole thing is really about um, figuring out the value function for each one of these states. And there is an algorithm, in fact, that does exactly that. So I'm going to discuss the uh, first, uh, this um, algorithm that um, uh, calculates the uh, value function for each state. And then, in fact, I'm going to come back to this idea of calculating the optimal policy and explain also a different algorithm that, in fact, uh, really reasons and calculates the optimal policy directly, uh, skipping this um, uh, calculation over here. But let's focus first on clarifying or calculating the um, value functions. And um, that means that the optimal policy is going to be defined in the way we have it on this slide. So the algorithm that I'm talking about is really simple. The, the way it goes is uh, you initialize the value functions to some arbitrary values. And then you are going to have uh, a repeat of this um, uh, part of the algorithm until you have a convergence on this um, value function. And what you do inside this cycle is this. For all the states and for all the actions, you are going to uh, calculate this uh, or we are going to update these um, uh, internal rewards, uh, Q, for state S and action A. And this is going to be exactly uh, this. You are going to have the expected value of the reward if you are in state S and, and take action A. Plus, um, then you have this um, uh, factor gamma times a sum over all possible states. Um, and then you have the uh, rewards you can possibly, um, you know, expect uh, if you are moving from S to S prime. In state S prime, we have these values. So um, 
this is the internal reward if we were in status and uh, we, we took act action uh, A and this is calculated for the current values of um, uh, this function V. Now, once we update our internal rewards, then we can reevaluate this um, uh, uh, this value function. And v of, s, v of s is going to be simply the best we can get in state s over any uh, action a. So this cycle here in the beginning, essentially what it does is it continuously updates v of s. Once you have a value of v of s, um, you are updating the internal rewards. Once you have the internal rewards, you are updating the, the, the value function and you just repeat this all over again. And there is a proof that in fact this um, uh, algorithm does converge and um, uh, its complexity uh, is uh, of this type. It's a, a big O of um, cardinal of S or the number of um, uh, states uh, squared uh, times the number of possible actions you can have. So um, this is maybe not the fastest algorithm you can um, you can hope to have for such a problem, but uh, it is doable. And um, very often, uh, in fact, you don't really have to go over all possible pairs uh, of states because in fact, uh, um, you don't really have uh, actions between all the possible pairs in here. So in fact, this uh, in practice, this is, this is going to be um, somewhat uh, smaller, depending on how dense your graph is, uh, the graph described by the, by the actions. So again, the idea of this algorithm was that we are going to um, calculate the value function. And once you had the value function, you can then go ahead and um, uh, calculate the policy um, uh, or the optimal policy uh, in uh, any state. But the other point I want to make in this lecture is that, in fact, uh, there is also an algorithm that allows you to estimate the optimal policy directly without going uh, necessarily via the estimate of the value function. And this algorithm is called the policy iteration. And it goes like this. You would initialize a policy, an initial policy P um, arbitrarily. And then you're going to have a repeat of this part of the algorithm until you have um, a convergence. So until there is no more update in the current policy. So it goes like this. You take your current policy and using this policy, you are going to calculate the value function. And the key observation here is that the way we have defined this um, uh, value function, in fact, uh, by um, uh, consequence is going to give you a linear system of equations where the unknowns are exactly these um, uh, value functions calculated for each state s. So remember the, the way this was defined was like this and you can see it very clearly that it's just a linear combination of these value functions. So you have a linear system of equations, you can um, solve this and, and calculate this um, uh, value function. And once we have the value function, we are attempting to improve the policy in each state. And, and we are going to say, well, in this state, um, uh, maybe I can do better depending on uh, the, the value function. So you would say, well, the best I can do here in, in terms of uh, the reward is I'm going to maximize the reward I'm getting with uh, any action A plus these uh, delayed rewards uh, that I get after I move to the next state uh, uh, with, with action A. So um, again, it, it, it's a matter of um, iterating over and over again until you have um, a convergence. And uh, the idea is that for any policy, you calculate the value function. And once you have the value function, you are attempting to improve the, the policy. And again, this is an algorithm that is proved to uh, converge. And its um, uh, computational complexity is big O of um, cardinal of A times cardinal of S squared plus um, cardinal of S cubed. So this is a um, slower algorithm than the uh, value iteration uh, algorithm, but in fact it's one that in practice turns out to require uh, less iteration. So in practice, this, this could be a good alternative to the uh, value iteration algorithm.